Hello everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is like my literally bajillionth time attempting to film this voiceover. I don't film voiceovers very often. Um, just never know what to say, which is weird because in real life I feel like I do. Um, but anyways, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has been a while. Um, I've just been really busy with school and, you know, life in general, but... I definitely do want to post more stuff on YouTube. I think it's like a really great platform to like share um, art. I, you know, that's kind of the, one of my main reasons for using YouTube basically when I use it as a consumer. Um, anyways, that's random. Uh, I'm painting lemonade. Uh, this is one of my favorite albums by one of my favorite artists. And so I think it's a really, um, it's just an, it's, it's an exceptional body of work and I really love the cover for it, and so I decided to bring out the oil paints. You know the deal. Um, I've been painting with oils a lot more uh, recently. It's honestly my favorite medium of paint. It's just I, you know, when you when you go to like the Met and you know all those really fancy paintings, capital G good paintings. <laughs> um, those are usually done in oils, so. You know, there there is a sort of aspect to it when you're trying to, you know, go into traditional art. It, ma it makes sense to use, you know, materials and mediums that other traditional artists use, which is totally obvious. But I've been using acrylic and watercolor uh, for my whole life, pretty much. Um, and, you know, the thing about acrylic is that it, it sucks. It, it actually doesn't suck. Honestly, I think it can be just as easy to paint with... Um, acrylics as it is to paint with oils however the thing with acrylic for me is the drying time is just too fast and you know I really like having blend in my pieces and stuff I, I've noticed that in oils that's something that I'm you know able to do very easily obviously because it's literally oil um, it's just oil and pigment that's it that's all oil painting is um, but yeah I, I really enjoy oil painting also uh, once I got through the initial setup, and by that I mean, um, you know, literally just having a jar of Gamsol so I don't have to refill it every time, which is what I used to do. Yeah, I just, I don't know, voiceovers are hard. This is kind of awkward, but I just wanted to film a, you know, a, a long talking video. I think in a lot of my videos I get kind of excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm totally going to film a super fun, epic, hilarious voiceover. And then when it's time for me to actually speak... Uh, I have nothing to say. <laughs> also, I did use a grid for this. Um, by that I mean I just, uh, I did a 4x4. Four four. Honestly, it wasn't even, like, I didn't get any details <laughs> down with um, the grid. I, I drew that all in myself, but uh, the grid method can be really useful for just getting the proper proportions, um, you know, especially for painting a reference that, you know, you want your, um, actual finished product to look like the reference. I definitely, somewhat often, I will use a reference photo, but then just use it for like the basic, um, you know, facial proportions. I usually only use reference photos if I'm, you know, painting portraits and stuff. And, you know, that's how, that's how one improves. Never let anyone tell you that using a reference photo is, you know, makes you a bad artist. Anyone who says that to you is probably a bad artist. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> um, but, um, I mean, obviously there are pros and cons using reference photos. Definitely, as someone who uses reference photos very often, I have sometimes noticed an ability, its ability to kind of hamper my general creativity. However, I will also say that because I use references, um, I'm able to also be creative in that sense because I don't have to constantly worry about my own memory when it comes to facial proportions and, you know, and what what real what looks realistic and what doesn't um but you know it, this is that doesn't really in the context of this painting it doesn't necessarily apply i i just use the grid um to just get the proportions and to make sure that her head is kind of centered in the way that i would like it to be centered um also for this particular piece you know the color of it is just so um important and i i guess like in most of my pieces that I do, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, in the background of the sketch, 
and kind of deciding what I want the whole composition to look like. I don't necessarily think about color theory often. I actually wish I did. <laughs> um, color theory is hard to learn, especially because it's something that is, has so much to do with literally indiv individual people's vision. That's kind of it, and I, I'm sure people will disagree with me, and they'll have some valid points to that, but um, for a lot of my paintings personally, I care so much about the structure um, of the whole piece, um, but I never pay attention to color, and when it comes to literally painting, because you're just applying color, um, it can, you know, it can be sort of daunting to learn color theory, especially with something that you're just not familiar with. I've, you know, I haven't taken an art class since I was literally in seventh grade. Um, dang, that's crazy. I haven't taken an art class since I was literally in seventh grade. Um, you know, does art literacy count? <laughs> Actually, art literacy does count. I loved art lit as a kid. It was incredible. I, I wish we still had it in high school. Um, it's crazy to think how my uh, skill level has kind of changed in the last year. Honestly, part of that is just because of... Um, the panoramic. <laughs> um, you know, when I, I was, I'm a sophomore in college now, but when I was a freshman, we all got, kind of got shipped home and I suddenly had all this extra time to, you know, really delve into, um, art again. And I'm, I'm really honestly very grateful for that. It's, I love painting, always have, always will. Um, I have quite a few friends who also paint and stuff and, um, you know, I was talking to one of them and they expressed how it's really difficult to like switch to new mediums, especially when it comes to oil painting. I feel like it's such a, it's, it's really a daunting task sometimes. I remember when I first started oil painting about two years ago and honestly, I, I take like long breaks from painting in general, but especially from oils, like it's, it's so hard to clean. <laughs> I never know what's going on in that sense. And also like, you know, it's, it's, much more expensive than acrylic paint. Like I buy my acrylic paint from Joann's from Apple Barrel. <laughs> and actually, that's actually pretty good uh, acrylic paint. My one thing is it does dry incredibly fast, you know, but I do like it almost more than my Liquitex Basics. Clearly I'm not a professional acrylic painter. <laughs> but anyways, about oil painting is, you know, the setup of, of it is a little bit difficult. You need obviously the paint, which is more expensive than most mediums and you need, um, turpentine and gamsol and sometimes linseed oil or other oils to kind of spread your whatever. Anyways, my point is that oil painting can be a little bit difficult to just get started with. Um, but also I've, you know, kind of decided it's just a way for me to be able to be as creative and just, you know, kind of create as much stuff as possible and to make that process just easier for me to make it not feel like a burden, especially like I paint usually at the end of the day, um, so like after I've had, you know, a full day of classes, you know, been been coding away for a while, <laughs> and so sometimes I'm just so exhausted, and even though if I really want to paint and it's something that's like a priority to me, um, I just will not have the energy to set up anything, um, you know, which which makes sense. It's, it's really difficult being, you know, a, a full-time student and also um, pursuing artistic things simultaneously, you, you kind of forget, like, you know, as they say, uh, it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert, um, you know, on something, uh, and it's unfortunate when you have to spend the, the vast majority of your time, you know, uh, being a student and, uh, doing your best in academic life, which is, which is my priority. I will say, however, it is nice uh, not having a job anymore. I actually recently um, just decided to quit. I um, am a little bit burnt out just from school in general. Zoom fatigue is totally a thing, um, and it affects a lot of us. Um, I'm really excited to have the next couple of months to not, um, you know, necessarily have to have a job. <laughs> Which is, I, I realize I'm, I'm very lucky to, to not have to work um, while uh, being a full-time student, because I know so many who do, and it is, it's truly very difficult. Um, and, you know, being in college is hard, especially when all your classes are online, but it's okay, and at least I have an outlet for creativity, 
and something that makes me happy. Um, I've noticed that with painting is um, I'll paint a lot for a while and then I notice that the paint, I mean, some of my pieces that are even somewhat small uh, end up taking, um, you know, a, a decent amount of time for me. Uh, I know some people have the ability to work on paintings for months, years even, and I'm just not really at that level yet, perhaps. Also, uh, most people who work on pieces for um, months or years on end don't paint on those pieces every single day. Yeah, anyways, um, also I, I don't always think it's necessary to consider how much or how long a piece is going to take me because um, it just doesn't make sense to, to spend, you know, part of your art artistic thought process on that. Uh, some things are going to take longer than others. That is just the way it is. Um, but yeah, I really, I really did enjoy painting this particular painting. It only took me about six hours. Uh, sorry I didn't include the first couple hours of my uh, footage for when I started painting this. Uh, and the reason for that is because that footage doesn't exist because I forgot to record. Um, not just like forgot to press the button, like just straight up forgot that I wanted to record um, a time lapse of this piece um, until one of my roommates reminded me, uh, which was very helpful. Um, but in any case, I really enjoyed this particular piece. Um, it was something that I just had so much fun with. And, you know, it's always nice when you can, you can paint something that means to you artistically in another way, like this album. I mean, this album is just important to me, you know, uh, as someone who likes listening to music. Um, and it's nice that I can kind of give it a tribute in the form of a painting. Um, but I really hope you guys like this. Again, I'm going to try to post videos that are more similar to this. I like uh, filming time lapses, actually. They're, they're pretty convenient to film, especially I have like a good little spot nowadays. So uh, hopefully more of these videos will be um, present on the platform. But I, I really love the, the idea of a musical album, especially one like Lemonade. Um, you know, one with that, you know, goes along with a, a complete visual, uh, visual piece to it. And it just makes the music just even more meaningful than it already is. Um, actually, uh, recently I, I was, I saw a YouTube video that was like, well, Lemonade has like 60, you know, writers or whatever. And I really don't care. <laughs> I don't care because the album is incredible. Every single song, every single piece, every single interlude is so well thought out and um i just love beyonce seriously what can i say this might just be this entire video just might be like leading up to oh i love beyonce uh which is completely obvious and something that everyone who knows me already knows um but yeah i just i really loved this doing this particular piece again an album that i love keep on saying that will not stop saying that um Anyways, I'm kind of just putting the, the finishing touches on it now. The significant challenges for this particular painting, I felt for me personally, uh, was just kind of figuring out how to do that feather uh, kind of detail pattern on her jacket. It actually wasn't um, that difficult because I did like a full kind of underpainting. Underpainting, I say in quotation marks, it was really just me kind of blocking out the color. Um, and then later on, I went in with a, with another brush and then put in some of the feathering detail, which is what makes it look uh, somewhat realistic. Um, and I also found that it was really difficult to do her uh, braids. Um, I don't know if you can see in, in the reference on the, on the left there, um, but it is pretty detailed. I kind of did a sort of illusion of detail. I felt like it didn't make sense in the context of my painting to define every little uh, tiny braid. Um, it was a little bit difficult to paint her ear as well, um, just because uh, it's the only kind of skin tone uh, feature that's present in the entire uh, album cover and the painting. Yeah, so I I really enjoyed doing this one. I'm, I'm really proud of it, actually. Uh, so that always feels good. Um, but yeah, here's the finished product. Um, I, again, love doing it. Great use of my time, great use of six hours, and um, you guys should like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content related to this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.